Hey guys, Paleo Greenbird here. I hope everyone's doing awesome. It's spring here. Um, well, it's spring everywhere, I suppose, but it's starting to actually feel like spring here in Maine. It's starting to warm up, and um, I've decided that I'm going to redo my grab-and-go bag for the spring. And I had done it a couple different ways. Um, at first, I had a my grab-and-go bag that was just had everything under the sun in there. I mean, zombie apocalypse, uh, hurricane, tornado, sharks, whatever, you name it. And it was in there, and I just found that that was really impractical. A lot of stuff that I'm never going to use, a lot of stuff that, um, even in a survival situation, that probably wouldn't be the best thing to have in my pack as far as trading space and weight for calories and, and energy. So then I went to making seasonal packs, and what I would do is I'd make a winter, summer, uh, winter, spring, summer, fall pack, and uh, it worked a little bit better. But then I found that. After I made my summer pack, by the time fall rolled around, my skills had changed, my gear preferences had changed, my ability to use gear, the different types of gear had changed. So it was almost obsolete before I had a chance to use it. Um, but I did like that idea. So what I've switched to is now every year I have one bag that I take everything out of and I'll put back in what I want for that season, what I think is appropriate. And also I've incorporated a system of redundancy that not only is redundant as far as survival or emergency situations but things that I could use in real life and just to give you an idea of some of those things like you know whether it be a tarp a can opener uh, you know things that can will double you know maybe I'm on a picnic and someone's got some food we need a can opener well now I've got a can opener now I'm not talking about one of those ones you twist and, and turn I'm talking about you know one of the small metal ones that you can just you know pop open a can um, you know, you have to go all the way around it if you're going to take the lid completely off. Things like that. But I'll go, I'll, I'll have a video about that uh, once I get my pack done. I'm going to share it. But today I wanted to share what I think is one of the most underrated pieces of, of gear and equipment that you can have in your pack. And I think everybody should have it to some extent. And that is gloves. Right? So I've got a couple different kinds of, of gloves here, and you don't need to spend a fortune. And let me tell you why I think gloves are so important. Whether it be, you know, you're broken down on the side of the road, you're changing a tire, and you don't want to cut up your fingers. Whether it be you're collecting firewood in an emergency situation, or even worse, a survival situation. And, um, you know, one thing you really want to protect in a survival and emergency situation is your hands. Because if your hands go, boy, there's so much you can't do. Makes it hard to hold an axe, makes it hard to pick up a piece of wood, makes it hard to... You know, put your weight into something, makes it hard to even move around on the ground if you have to support yourself. So your hands are something that it's, it's essential, there's that word again that I hate, that you keep those protected. And it doesn't have to be a fancy pair of gloves. You know, this is a pair of gloves that I use for, um, you know, cleaning my animals, pens and stuff like that. It's just a pair of Husqvarna gloves. These I got at a store around, uh, called Martin's here in Maine. And basically Martin's is like a big box, not a big box, that's the wrong word to use. It's, um... It's kind of like an outlet store that gets stuff from uh, big box stores. You know, whether if there's a flood or a fire or, you know, whatever the case is, they have stock that they're just going to throw out and they want to get rid of. Um, in the case of the fires and the floods, oftentimes they just don't want to take the time to go through and sort what's good and what's not good. So they just claim it on their insurance and it gets uh, sent to that store. So these were uh, two pairs for, I think, $10. Probably not going to find that, that price on Amazon. It's got the nice pads and everything on the bottom. It's got the nice knuckle protection. and uh, But here's some that I did just recently buy on Amazon. So these were about $10, $10, $12 for two pairs. Um, this here, same type of glove, looks almost identical. Also Husqvarna. And, um, but it's slightly different on the inside. They're leather. Well, I think they're leather. And um, a little bit more robust as far as the padding and... The stitching and stuff and these I got on Amazon two pairs for I think $24 so still not expensive you know for what it's worth and what it can do to help help you in a situation when you really need it and then I got so back to these ones if you can't afford the $25 or whatever it is find a buddy to split these with because it comes in pairs of two two pairs so back to these these are a little bit more um, these ones were a little bit more expensive. I got them just because, I don't know, they kind of looked cool. 
but again I made sure that I got something that had the protection on the knuckles this one actually one thing I do like about this and the reason that I got it was that it has the the uh, protection on the knuckles of all the fingers instead of just uh, let's see like you don't really have that on these you just have it on the you know the knuckles of your hand not necessarily the knuckles of your fingers and same with this one over here so this one I do like a lot better it was a little bit more expensive though this was I think $25 for one pair um, it's got a little bit better grip in my opinion okay so these are M packed made by mechanics mechanics wear free plug for mechanics where I haven't had a chance to try these out but um, I have put them on they feel really comfortable these I can tell you I've had these for probably if I had to guess at least two three seasons and um, they have had they have held up very very well starting to get a little bit wear in this finger right here and um, the, I have another pair of gloves where it actually uh, it wore pretty much through the finger I mean you're, you've, you can see your finger on the other side so it was time for me to get new gloves anyway so that kind of inspired me to see what was out there, and uh, I'm very, very happy. Everybody in my family has a pair of these to put in their pack, and I've got these. And I'll probably just, I'll probably try and uh, put these through the ringer and do a, do a gear review on those. So anyway, I, I hope everybody's doing awesome. Stay safe. Um, stay happy. Happy Easter, everybody, if you celebrate it. If you don't, then just have a great Sunday anyway. All right. Later, guys. All right, real quick before I go. You know I can't end a uh, gear video without plugging the dollar store. If these are all out of your budget, completely understandable. We're all in tough times right now. Even a pair of cheap uh, garden gloves or something from the dollar store. I know that I just broke the Internet by saying that. and that People are going to light it up. But uh, it's better than nothing. And don't let anybody ever tell you that you're better off having nothing than something because that's just not true. Um, so if you can't afford any of these, even a simple pair of gardening gloves, just something to keep the friction off of your fingers and off of your palms and give you a little bit of protection. Um, when it's wet and rainy, you get a little extra grip. So tell me what you think. Tell me if you think these are good or if you have a better set of gloves that you use in your pack. And um, everybody take care. Bye.